Hey everybody, it's Irene with Brainstorm Makers. And today, we have the attack of the killer cucumbers. <laughs> It's a Sunday. I know for some that's a day of rest, but not on the homestead. What I'm going to do today is reduce the quantity of cucumbers in my refrigerator and turn them into a combination of things. The first thing I'm going to do is make a big batch of Sunamono for Henry. Now we've done this before on our videos and we'll put a link up as I recall, <laughs> to uh, that video. It's a super quick, basically a Japanese refrigerator pickle. Henry loves them. And when I make a batch of them, they're good for probably at least four days. And they still maintain their crunch and yumminess. So that's gonna be step one. I'm going to make at least two batches of these because I really need to cut down the number of cucumbers in my, in my uh, fridge. Step one. <laughs> Step two is a Greek dressing slash dip slash whatever you want to use it for called tzatziki. I made this for Henry the other day and he loved it. I've had tzatziki multiple times at good Greek restaurants and I knew he really liked it so Let's get it made. Okay, this one I have not shared with you before. And I'm actually going to have to go collect a couple of things. So I'll be back in just a minute. I had to go out to the garden and get a few things and scrounge around a little in the fridge. But I'm ready to go. We're going to make tzatziki. Now first let me put the card up. So that you guys can know what we're doing. This is not hard. Not complicated. It's actually pretty darn quick. So the first thing I'm going to do is grate an English cucumber. Now they say to use a half of an English cucumber. Now I think it depends on the size of your English cucumber. I have specifically chosen one here that is small. A lot of the ones in the grocery store are much larger than this. But my goal is simply to process all my cucumbers today and I'm processing the little ones along with the big ones. So first thing I'm going to do is grate this cucumber. And I'm going to grate it into a bowl because cucumbers are about nine tenths water. <laughs> so 
So there's going to be cucumber juice involved. Now, I was actually listening to somebody on YouTube the other day, and they were talking about using cucumbers as a source of juice for cucumber water and stuff like that. And several people have said they like doing that, um, adding it to smoothies and stuff like that. Smoothies are not a big part of our diet. But if you do like smoothies, there's certainly plenty of liquid in cucumber. My goal here is to grate as much of the cucumber as possible and not grate my fingers at all. Close enough. <laughs> Trying to get as much of this out of there as possible. There we go. And if you can see, if I squish this, there's definitely a lot of moisture in there. So I'm going to actually one of my strainers has been missing lately. No idea where it went. I know what it was used for last. I just don't know where it went when it got done being used. Because it wasn't put back where it's supposed to be. So we'll use a colander. Not the perfect tool, but good enough. All I want to do is get out some of this moisture. It does not have to be bone dry. I just don't want to make the tzatziki really watery. It should be similar to a ranch dressing. Except won't beer. <laughs> so, obviously if I didn't squeeze it out at all, this liquid was mixed with the spices and uh, the other ingredients tend to make it watery so i'm just going to squish it a little bit in case you're wondering where henry is he is hauling water this morning so as henry would say we're working together apart okay i have my cucumber it is grated according to my instructions on the back it says great cucumber press or squeeze combine ingredients serve with pita okay <laughs> doesn't sound too hard And I did do a video the other day on how to make pita bread. And it was really, really good. I'll have to check to see if Henry posted that one. I'm not sure he did. But he really liked the bread, so I'll have to make sure he posted that one. All right. So there's my cucumber. I'm going to add to that about a cup of yogurt. In this case... This is our homemade yogurt. I have posted a video about that too. We do not have any dairy animals here, but we make yogurt from store-bought milk. Super easy. I used to do it using a heating pad and all that kind of stuff. There it is. Delicious. <laughs> all right. Cucumber, yogurt. Now, I'm cheating on the garlic clove. We always keep some garlic in the fridge. Organic, premium minced. No weird things, just garlic, water, and citric acid and stuff like that. So, uh, I need one half a teaspoon equals about a clove of garlic. So... There we go. There's our clove of garlic. I went out to this garden. That's one of the places I had to go to. And I got mint out of the garden. And what we need here is about a tablespoon of mint. I recall that's about what I used last time, and he thought that was perfect. And I'm just going to mince this up. This is one of those ingredients where we say, it could have been fresher, but I would have had to run. We have peppermint in the flower bed right outside here. And I'm going to add 
some dill. I'm a smidge sort on dill because we're sort of in between crops right now. Most of our big dill has gone to seed. And I have a couple of little baby dills started up. But they're too little to start chopping big pieces off of yet. So I've got just a little, and I'm actually going to add a little bit of dried dill. And because this will sit for a while before it gets used, the dried dill will rehydrate. Now that dried dill was from our own garden. <laughs> so I just harvested it the other day and I didn't need all of it for something I was making. So I saved it in my dill department. <laughs> I should show you guys the dill department. I'm currently calling this the dill department. I bring in heads of dill seeds that are ready to be either used in dill pickles or as a whole head, because sometimes it'll say just stick a head of dill in the, in the pickle jar, or I take the seeds off. Either way, they get used. Now obviously a few wind up back in the garden because there's always some that fall off and I'm actually purposefully planting some right now because I'm really short on dill. Lemon zest to taste. Now what I'm going to do here is I have a clean lemon and I'm just going to use the zester side of this. If I didn't have a already dirty grater I would have grabbed out the micro grater. I may, I may use the other one. I did this the other day and it worked okay. But I prefer the micro grater. It works so much better. You don't need a lot. You're just trying to get that kind of bright lemon flavor added to everything else in here. And you're also going to add some lemon juice. But lemon zest has a very specific sharp, bitter or aromatic sort of thing going on that it's there in the lemon juice but not as much as in the zest. Different oils. Lemon zest, two tablespoons of lemon juice. Now, if you see what I'm doing right now, I'm rolling that lemon between the palm of my hand and the cutting board or the table or whatever else I'd be using. What that does is it breaks down the cell structure inside. It makes it a lot easier to get that lemon juice out. I'm going to squeeze this because I don't want to waste it. A little pulp won't hurt anything. And then this silly thing I screw in. We've had this for like a million years. I'm sure we bought it when we were in California the first time. And I didn't put a ton of lemon in there last time. So I'm going to keep that about the same. I would start with a tablespoon of lemon and see if you like it. Now, unfortunately, several seeds just fell in here. And we will take those out because it's nice to have fiber in your food, but lemon seeds are probably not high on that list of cool things to put into your food. <laughs> I swear every lemon seed in the whole lemon must have fallen in. That's hysterical. <laughs> okay. There we go. Much better. No lemon seeds need apply. Okay. Get the lemon seeds out of here and rinse the hands off. Woo! And of course, the hands are always clean before you start any of this stuff, so you just don't have to worry about it. Okay. Lemon zest. Lemon juice. Let me see if I squish a little bit more in there. Woo! There we go. Without the seeds this time. Okay, teaspoon of fine salt. Now, the half a teaspoon of fine salt. The reason it says fine salt is if I were to use kosher salt, the salt would have a tendency to stay in one spot more. It'll be more hard, more difficult to dissolve. So if you are going to use kosher salt, you need to grind it in a little mortar first. Because the last thing you want is lumps of salty bits in your tzatziki. Now it's a little bit of pepper. I'm just going to shake some out of here. 
I did that last time and he said that was fine. And it's hard to guess how much this is. I would say it's about a small pinch. And a lot of this is objective. Subjective, sorry. <laughs> Subjective. Whew. Um, it depends on what you personally like. That's why an apple pie is not an apple pie. It depends on whose family you're in as to what an apple pie tastes like. So it's the same thing when you come to salt and pepper and any other spice. Every person has their personal preferences. This is a good starter recipe. And then you go from there and you change it up. If you like more garlic, you add more garlic. I've had some tzatziki before in restaurants that was super garlicky and others that wasn't garlicky at all. Now what I'm going to do is this jar was simply where my yogurt came from. So I am going to mash all of this together. There it is. It just looks like a very gooey coleslaw, but it's a different texture than that. It's actually much wetter, but it makes a great dip. And if I had, like if, if I used heavier yogurt, like a Greek yogurt, it would be thicker. If I strained the grated cucumber more, it would also be thicker. But that's how you make tzatziki. Now I recommend leaving it in the, in the uh, fridge for at least an hour. I'm gonna just repack it into the jar that the yogurt came out of and stick it back in there on the top shelf with a little sign on top that says tzatziki. Not that I would not notice that this has stuff in it, but that way Henry knows what it is if he peeks in the fridge. Gonna be going on to more cucumbers, but that's enough for this video. So hope this inspires you to try making a tzatziki. Tzatziki is frequently served at Greek restaurants as a dip I think it's great at the beginning of any kind of a get together or as an appetizer. The same way you'd serve oh, um, our spinach artichoke dip or something like that. Uh, tzatziki served with pieces of pita bread. Henny actually took some of the pita bread that I had uh, made the other day, opened it up and stuffed it with the tzatziki. Very messy, but he really enjoyed it. So I hope this inspires you. It's not hard. You can fine tune it to your own flavor profile once you've tried it once. I recommend, recommend trying it once first and then onward and upward. So be sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell because we're gonna be doing all kinds of stuff like tzatziki. And I still have lots more cucumbers to get through today. So you'll have to come back and see what I do with those. So until next time, bye.